So actually right now I'm speaking to the future and you are in the future. Get it? I'm speaking to you in the future because you could see it later. And if I do it like that, then I speak to you in the present. Then breathe. Because now I speak to you, which is them, or them, which is you. The one I jack around in. Si riteneva detestabile. E dove sono?
innamorata di voi. Thank you. 
holds in theater, you know. And if I arrive uh, to put together uh, professional actors and not professional, this is uh, the good, uh, the, the good uh, mix. ese cuento, yo estaba en cama, postrado, tenía que estar quieto, de espaldas, y esto eh, fue en el mes de febrero en Buenos Aires, un calor terrible, tenía que estar quieto, de espaldas, la persona no sabe muy discreta, no va a decir nada, no. Cuento de este algún modo, se me ocurrió esa trampita. Bueno. Yo no podía mover mi cabeza de un lado para otro. Yo estaba muriéndome de calor. La lectura del volumen inédito del Journal del Goncourt me provocó un strano turbamento. Goncourt raccontaba de una cena en que conté dove era el palazzotto de Verdurán. Era... So, just, yes, all right. By noon, they will have shot nearly five ten. I changed just Ashimak from a writer and a musician because I thought that... Thank you. 
I follow you on TV and stuff since 2000. When, was, when did you go to prison in Senegal? Okay, but there was this, there was this I one. Forgot about it. Okay, but there was this one big thing was you went to Senegal. Venez de goûter. C'était bien des fragments d'existence soustraits au temps. Seul cet être là avait le pouvoir de me faire retrouver les jours anciens. Le temps perdu. Le temps perdu. Le temps perdu. Um, um, sorry, I, I just uh, woke Next up. joke. Um, it's not a comedy show, by the way. Okay. I don't look all funny. Quelle était la cause de cette félicité que je venais de ressentir? Ces diverses impressions bienheureuses avaient entre elles ceci de commun que je les éprouvais à la fois dans le moment actuel et dans un moment éloigné. Ce que l'être par trois et quatre fois ressuscité en moi. Being, uh, indecent pictures and things like that. Best porn ever. <laughs> I direct. Or... Pour faire parler la petite blanchisseuse, je l'ai emmenée dîner, je l'ai fait boire. I had a feeling you're not a poet. No I matter how know. many interviews I see, how many articles I read, I see. Tu me mets aux armes. Tu me mets aux armes. Je voyais Albertine recomposée à côté de la blanchisseuse et de. Corrió la idée de ce cuento. Je estaba en cama, postrado. Tenía que estar quieto, de espaldas. I met you. I met this guy um, today for the first time. Uh, getting um, uh, subs. Les sandwiches sont succulents. C'est un radieux qu'on en vient à n'aimer que les très jeunes filles du grand hôtel de Balbec et devant cette bibliothèque de l'hôtel de Guermant. The, the canvas, like literally the can Je vous aime bien. Je me dis que c'était avec Albertine que j'aurai mon roman. Le déchirement miraculeux des nuées. Cette fois tout est fini. J'ai rompu. Get it? La serviette avait précisément le même genre de raideur et d'empesé que celle de. The, you, you went to prison for having prostitutes or painting? Bonne manière de savoir la vérité. Elle nous envoie la composition qu'elle a eue à son examen. Il ne faut pas partir sans avoir remercié Madame. Il n'y a personne. To go through the process of getting. Dans le gazouillis de ces jeunes filles. Had to put in prison for owning a brothel, pimping basically. Pimping brothel, painting. Breathe. Nothing escapes the director's eye. Visconti on Stein, a film proposal by J. Ritzerfeld. Producer, Rizzoli Zunes Corp, Milan. Scenario and direction, Lucchino Visconti and Victor Palfi. Photography, Pascal DeSantis. Cast. Yadav Alter Finn as Yadav Alter Finn. Sina Kenny as Sina Kenny. Gertrude Stein as Gertrude Stein. Marcel Proust, as Marcel Proust. Sordello de Visconti as Lucchino Visconti. Marlon Brando as Marlon Brando. Preview, Tremezzo, Lago de Como, Somewhere in the Future. The Story. From the past, the blind narrator Sordello, behind whose head the time passes, that is, moves towards us, looks into the future. The words he formulates, the sentences he constructs, 
bring about a relationship of thoughts about a possible relationship between people. At the moment Sordello brings a ear cup of headphones to his left ear, the first smaller music. We are in the studio of Gertrude Stein, where a total of four characters are present. Their arrangement may look like a familiar constellation. The actions of the characters consist of spoken language and body movements. The director's visual acts are added to this. The cameras do not leave the four walls for a moment. There is nothing outside the studio. The characters are, Sordello de Visconti, the sitting shadow, the signpost at the beginning or the end of the path to be covered, he formulates words and sentences, derived from the work of Jorge Luis Borges. Gertrude Stein, she is almost in the center of the act, seated at a long, empty table of allure, together with Marlon Brando in the self-unrolling, as of a snake, at the same time self-devouring, item, sentences from the work of Gertrude Stein. Marcel Proust, the character who tries to escape in identifications with his mother, grandmother, Odette, Albertine, his wandering gaze makes abundant use of the figurines on the walls he is the only one present who is on the leg. Alice B. Toklas, she listens or searches for the origin of every speaking and singing voice that resounds, that is her only but total function, perhaps she escapes from this tomb. Yadav Alter Finn, friend and lover of Marcel Proust. Sina Kani, another friend and lover of Marcel Proust. In the car on his way to Milan, Spencer told his wife the so far forgotten story of Mr. Maurizio Baboli, who in 1945, of silliness and admiration for T. E. Lawrence, gave his daughter the name Lawrence. So the Orient came together again after two generations. In addition to the literary tap, the daughter also inherited half of the financeability from her father, which was collected with a very simple but secret essence formula. Still with his life, so that the father could see from the roof of his villa built in Galilee style on a hill behind Florence, as it were with a thousandfold fortified theater viewer, how carelessly his favorite daughter, around her 25th, moved in Milan with the family Bugatti, of which a mechanic lover had cut off the roof. The father, and the flaneurs, saw how Lawrence, with her car maneuvers, was rubbing the bark of terrace trees, scratching the marble and granite of arcade galleries. After a while men did not like to sleep with a woman who was called Lawrence from the boardwalk. Moreover, they preferred to be with women. For Spencer that was, five years ago, an additional attraction. He called her Laura at the time. The other half of the inheritance had fallen to her ten-year-old sister Emma, a dull woman stake with a few extraordinarily interesting features in her face. Those who had an eye for talent never succeeded in describing what that fascinating matter was. Emma produced films that were all about the unification, or the cleavage of Italic and the role of Milan in it, around 1870, the so-called Sforza films. In Piazza Cavour, in the center of Milan, above the marble entrance of Rizzoli's office building, letterboxes or a panel were shot through by an invisible scribe writer, by electronic means. Apparently the operator consulted a dictionary at the same time. Spencer sat for five minutes looking through the windshield of the car until the sequence of the letters seemed to be fixed. He read, Abundancy N0, Redundancy yes. When he got out and looked up again, he saw, Redundancy N0, Abundancy yes. In the hall a moody dressed girl, with beautiful long woolly hair, approached us. She introduced herself as Miss Rosen. She said that the preview of Visconti on Stein had been moved to the Villa Carlotta, in Tremezzo, Lago di Como. I had a tendency to ask, what was that so? But the clumsiness of that formulation was not easily translated. Miss Rosen said she had waited for us to accompany, accompany, guide the way, enable us access. I noticed that we had not read a message in any magazine, not even in a Swiss language, that Visconti could have realized his Proust project. But perhaps I made up for the dubious suggestion, 
said Mr. Andrea Rizzoli at last that a film to a detail from the works by Marcel Proust could promote the sale of the book-based work by Rizzoli editor. It was only in the car that Miss Rosen withdrew emphatically with voice, Du wirst dich wundem. She repeated the slogan a few times with an ever warmer, deeper galvanizing timber. After the further development of the short ride, Spencer's wife and Roswitha only talked about the discrepancy between the attractions and the possibilities of four-language Italian women. Spencer was not interested in that. His affair with Lawrence had been so short-lived that he could not forget her. Even his obesity he still called luxuriance. For ten days her face was the battlefield of softness and cutting intelligence. He feared that the softness, now, had overcome. He watched a rising camera crane force her face to make a tilting motion, tightening her skin along her cheekbones and jaws. But more clearly than her face, he saw the names, the letters of the names of the directors who could have used her face. He said, aloud to the two women in the car, who did not listen to him. Romer, Truffaut, Bertolucci they did not listen when he suggested stopping at an attractive restaurant, under a mulberry tree. It's not fun, he went on, driving further, coming all the way from Switzerland to Italy, moreover under false pretenses, perhaps only to see how John Wayne lifts his creaking wreck for a water trough, and also via Milan back to Como. To make a detour, without being allowed to stretch a few minutes on the terrace above the lake. The words via Milan back to Como echoed in him, and suddenly, in a long, descending curve of the road, with a view of the logo di Como in the depth, a terrible suspicion overtook him. He interrupted the two women this time with a loud voice and a rough hand gesture. You go, Villa Belmonte, or did you say Villa Carlotta? The girl was too young to suspect any misunderstanding. What do you mean? Spencer's wife asked. She delayed for a few seconds, then explaining to Roswitha that he, Spencer, had thought in a spur of the moment that they were driving to the villa, for which Mussolini had been shot dead in 1945. Oh, that, said Roswitha, no. But it is not far away. I want to take you there tomorrow. He's a bit of a headache because he does not know exactly where we are going, and what for. He does not like that. There goes a 320 I, pointed Spencer, he has to live up to his tuning. What a waste. At the moment Spencer looked back, Roswitha lifted her pressed, pearly gray knees, pressed against each other, and, suppressing herself, she stopped, protesting against the back seat. He said, in such a beautiful black silk dress you can dope, marry, and bury. On the gravel of the parking lot at the entrance to the Villa Carlotta were two Ifetas, two Lancia Betas, and a brown DeSoto with Swiss license plate. They have already started, Roswitha said, without reminding Spencer of greater activity. He hesitated, waiting for a gesture of arm, from the direction of the guardian who had been placed in front of the closed gate. When he left the park of the Villa Carlo, the writer zoomed in his light brown colored brown DeSoto in the street light, he pulled a thin folder out of a fireproof slide mounted on the underside of the dashboard. Spencer had already walked around, but the writer told him, it's a duplicate, and he handed it to him. Accompanied by three women, they walked along the shore of the lake, behind Rizzoli and his staff, to the Hotel Lombardo, a hundred meters away. Before, during, or after dinner, Someone had thought, as far as Spencer could remember, to call Visconti to inform him of the bewildered silence after the screening. Neither did any of the men seek salvation in vulgar drunkenness. To ask for something, someone asked how Marlon Brando was thought to get women's clothes through the Dalian inspection. Rizzoli replied that he would introduce Marion as wife to the committee. Honestly, he expected more problems, from the literary circle, about the spoken French by Marcel Proust. While Rizzoli is not even the publisher of Proust, Roswitha whispered to Spencer. He felt caught. That's Giulio Inotti's editor. Say that name once in its Italian language. Spencer turned away, 
trying to meet Emma Zunes about her sister Lawrence in the half-light of the bar. Emma looked, and listened to his crooked phrases, and answered with a stroke, it's bad with her. As was his custom, he did not ask. His wife resisted the writer of the literary idea, she accused him of having introduced his characters as death masks, to leave them one and a half later as Polish madmen among the spectators. As Polish insane people? The author asked. He tried to turn the conversation over to cars, and then to music. You do not know what you're doing with those songs of Mahler, Spencer's wife said. Did I use them differently? The author asked. The writer continued, this morning, even if it seems to me a century ago, I was in a distinguished bookstore in Milan. A handwritten handkerchief was hanging at the box office, please hand over your bag before. When I returned to the counter with a sheet metal about Gustav Mahler and the Vienna of being there stood a classy old lady of standing, in each hand she deliberately deliberated in a book whether she would give one or the other book as a gift to another old lady. The seller said that the book could always be exchanged. One moment the lady saw the placard above the checkout and expressed her sympathy for this stark measure against theft, and concluded her inaugural lecture that there is no more morality today. With Mahler in my hands I began to shake with anger. Madam, I said, how dare you complain about the absent morality of today? Do you not remember the morality that was there forty years ago? Which you persecuted to death. You still do not know your enemies. I tremble so badly that I could not utter the words. The writer's face retreated behind his hand. Can you use her, Jehan use her? reverberated Ritzoli. Emma, 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 Emma retorted. For a whole night Spencer tried to imagine what language and image were worth in the fight against the traumas of those who were themselves language and images, stacking place or dirt. Spencer felt the physical need for shattering sounds of music, while Roswitha stood at the foot of the bed, her splayed hands spread over her ears. She clenched her teeth with wide open lips. He got out of the bed, and, looking for the bathroom, he first looked at his wife. He saw that she was preparing in word and gesture to treat Roswitha as their daughter. It gave him a feeling of relaxation, and a little later, in warm light, in the warm, flowing water of the bathroom, of happiness. An hour later Spencer walked into Emma's room to say goodbye. On a damask-covered schemmel, his curved back against the dressing table, sat the writer of the literary idea. He was completely dressed and held a fire and a cigarette in front of the face. Emma was supported by a pile of cushions in the cross sitting are at the head of the bed. In the pit of nightgown lay a collection of maquillages Stendhal. She held Spencer at a distance with vertical raised hands. From the foot end, do you try to say hello to me to your sister? Misery. She called after him. Just because he did not want to see the rasterized face of the sharper of the literary idea again, Spencer did not turn to Emma anymore. The next moment, passing the hallway past the bathroom, he remembered the occasion Laura had said to him, all these people are so self-conscious. He had never known if she meant chai or self-conscious. It had not occurred to him to present that language problem to her. Early in the afternoon, Driving into Switzerland along the north side of Lake Lugano, Spencer thought that the author of the literary idea, by lifting his hand with the smoking cigarette in front of it, had symbolized the solution of the problem. They could have given that movie to Fassbender better, said Spencer's wife. Five minutes later, after he had ended up in an urban traffic jam through a wrong turn, Spencer's philosophical torments were supplanted by the rapidly rising temperature gauge of his car. He was no match for that banal threat.